You mentioned NDEers, the near-death experiencers, that they come back changed. There's a wonderful woman I met through my website, and her name is Erica McKenzie. And um, gosh, we, we spent three hours on the phone, our first phone call, and she told me about her near-death experience with God. It was the most incredible thing I have ever heard. One of the many gifts that Erica has is she is able to see these orbs with her vision, just with her plain sight without a camera. And over the ensuing months that we've known each other, she is now seeing full faces inside these beautiful orbs. Yes, and I'm able to corroborate that. We have uh, photographs of orbs with human faces inside them. She is truly a remarkable human being. I feel so blessed to know her, and I can't wait for you to meet her. I've invited her here. I'm very excited to introduce you and, and to, to allow you to experience the magic that happens when she's nearby. As a preteen, Erica McKenzie was ridiculed for her appearance and turned to bulimia as a means to fit in, when all she wanted was to be liked and accepted by her classmates. When college created even more focus on body image, she turned to the prescription diet drug Phentermine for help. She kept her dark secret from her family, but the nine-year addiction to the drug had taken its toll. Erica suffered her near-death experience in 2002 at the age of 31 when her heart palpitations and difficulty breathing ended one day when she collapsed to the floor unconscious. You know, Erica, um, I know you've had an amazing experience, a, a near-death experience with God. And uh, as you know, I've lost my son. And I would like to ask you on my behalf and on the behalf of other grieving parents out there, what can you tell us about um, your journey over there that might help comfort us and let us know that there truly is something more, that our children are safe and loved and with God in heaven? Is my hope that through my story, my dying and coming back, that when I speak, I, I will help to bring some light and love and knowledge to feel and know that you are loved unconditionally the way you are meant to be, your unique self. I went through my life as a young child loving everyone and feeling the love from God unconditionally that He had for me. And then there was a period of my life when I got to be a teenager and I started stifling God's voice because what was happening is I really wanted to be liked, to be loved, to be accepted by everyone, by man. And that led me down a path, a very dangerous path of making a lot of choices that were not only unhealthy, but they ultimately led to my death. This is what happened. I took my last breath, and the most remarkable thing ended up happening. As I breathed out my last breath and I exhaled, it was instantly replaced with the most unconditional love. And I found myself going through a tunnel, not only filled with the brightest light and most powerful light, and I just felt so much love and going up. And I knew that I was going to heaven. I rose further and further. And then there I was delivered, literally, into the hands of God. And God and I stood together with our backs towards heaven. I could feel heaven all around me. God and I began to communicate. God said, look, I glanced and directly in front of me 
We watched the stars began to separate, creating a lining to reveal a movie screen. The Life Review of Erica McKenzie. The movie began and I recognized the tiny baby on the screen. It was me. We proceeded to watch the milestone events in my life from the day I was born until the day I died. I distinctly remember knowing that these were the memories that humans focused on, the ones they valued and used as a measure of success. Each and every one of the memories I went back and I relived as they came on the screen. And then something remarkable happened. God began to fill me with the unconditional love God, I can feel you wrap your arms around me. I feel you holding me. As my life review came to an end, I was aware that up to that very moment, I lived a lifetime in heaven. I was basking in my wonderful memories when God turned to me and he handed me a pair of eyeglasses. I put them on and then God said, Now look. At once, my second life review began, and as God and I sat there watching, the movie began to play once more, and again, it started with my birth. For the first time in my life, I could see. This time, I did not see the things I had before. This time I saw each and every word and action that are deemed unimportant, insignificant to man. Until God had revealed these memories to me, I had completely forgotten them. God taught me many lessons throughout this life review. I understood that these are the things in life that matter most. It wasn't the material things or money or degrees or titles I had garnered. God deems those things insignificant. It was the loving things that I did from the goodness of my heart that were most important. I also discovered that every word, thought, and action created a rippling effect. This rippling effect would go on to affect not only the people we may come into contact with in life, but more importantly, it would affect those that we never even see. It was the ripple that would affect mankind. I remember waiting, thinking, I haven't been judged yet. I was imperfect. Shouldn't God judge me? Isn't that what I deserve? At that very moment, I found myself thinking those thoughts. God replaced them with more love than imaginable. As His love flowed through me, it washed away any thoughts of judgment and disappointment. I never felt judged. I should have been judged. But He did not judge me. He loved me. At this very moment, I knew that I never wanted to be parted from Him. And God and I watched together. God reached up with His hand and in it was a rock. God turned to me and said, You are the rock. You are the light. The light is of me and I am with you. And we watched as God let it loose. And we watched it fall. I am the light. I am the rock. As the rock drew near, I saw a vast body of water larger than the ocean. Into the water, the rock plunged. I could feel the great force of its impact. Together as we watched, a single ripple of water appeared. God said, mankind, is the water. You are the ripple.
and I began to comprehend its significance. I am the ripple. I watched it grow until the border of this single ripple stretched so far that I could no longer see it. And then God turned to me and said, Like the ripple affects the water, so too does man's words and actions affect mankind. You are the rock. You are the light. You are the ripple that affects mankind. God again asked me to look. And again the stars parted. And this time, behind the curtain, was the most incredible shelves. And then all of a sudden, we look together, and there on all of the shelves appear gifts, presents. Like at Christmas, there were so many gifts on all of the shelves, they filled each and every space that was available. But not one gift looked like the other, not one. And he said, Erica, in life, I have more gifts for each and every one of you. And all we have to do to receive these gifts is ask. And then be prepared to be quiet and listen, to be able to receive those unique gifts. The very events that I took in my life that led up to that very day that I died was because I truly felt that I wasn't good enough. I wasn't pretty according to man's standards. And here God was telling me that that wasn't the case, that actually the gift was from Him. And so in that very moment when I had found myself thinking, oh no, God, that can't be right, He so lovingly corrected me by saying, Erica, Again, I gave you the gift of patience, and I gave you the gift of beauty. What I knew in that very moment was that the gift of beauty came from within my heart. It took me dying to realize that my uniqueness was actually my value. And my value my contribution here on this earthly journey and that's God's plan because that is how we are able to go on and do great things together God and I shared so many lessons I was literally there for what felt like a lifetime I truly felt I was staying in heaven I never wanted to be parted from God. And that is when God told me, it is time. I have two more gifts to give you. I'm giving you the gift of knowledge and wisdom. And you're not staying, child. I'm sending you back because your mission has just begun. You work for me now, remember? And Erica, when you go back, you must be quiet and listen to the people that I put into your life. And then when you do, you will take patience, beauty, and now knowledge and wisdom. And when you speak, you will change millions of people's lives and he sent me back with that Virginia out of my story I hope that you see that for each and every one of us the journey continues there's just something really wonderful she's so she's so authentic and childlike and really connected with, with God. That's all I can say. She just has the most beautiful open heart. And in knowing Erica, it's really opened my heart 
um, and um, strengthened my connection with God and all these beautiful spiritual events that are happening. They're bringing wonderful people in and experiences such as yourself sitting here with me tonight. Um, I'm just really thrilled to be able to share this um, phenomenon with you. It is my hope, my mission, that I fill them with not only the unconditional love, but truly with that love, they too then are able to see their uniqueness because their uniqueness truly is their value. And that's our contribution on this earthly journey.